The following recording is brought to you by APQC, your source for benchmarking and best practice research. Now, the value integrators, as we'll see in a moment, um, have, have done the most to drive risk measures into their financial performance reporting framework. So they have clearly a better handle on it uh, than, than the rest. So um, moving on, this next slide really, if we look at the demands on finance and the priorities that they have, you know, essentially what we're saying here is two capabilities need to be in place. I alluded to this a moment ago, but finance efficiency and business insight. You need to do these two things well to really be able to support the organization, the enterprise, in, in this challenging environment of greater uncertainty, high volatility, and, and let's face it, you know, what looks to be a, a prolonged recessionary period with, with slow growth prospects over the next few years, at least in the mature markets. Uh, but, but even in the growth markets, uh, you know, I, I've, I've spent some time out in, in China, uh, Japan, um, India and, and South Korea as part of uh, uh, presenting these study findings. And, and there are some concerns there as well about growth abating um, uh, more so than anticipated. And they're scrambling to drive cost reduction initiatives. Uh, I was surprised by this when I spoke with a group of CFOs in China a while back. So these two capabilities need to be in place. How did we arrive at the factors that sort of represent companies' capabilities in this area? Well, what we did is we, we looked at the financial performance of our participants. Um, specifically, we asked the question, what are your top two most important financial measures? And the most frequently cited measures included EBITDA, uh, revenue or some measure of revenue growth, uh, some measure of, of uh, expense structure or operating efficiency, and, and some balance sheet measure, return on invested capital, return on assets, return on equity, uh, also most frequently cited. So, so we took those, those financial performance measures of our participants, and we used them as an independent variable to do a multiple regression analysis. Um, and, and the dependent variables were the responses to all the different questions in the study. And we were looking for those criteria or characteristics of our participants that were most highly correlated with financial outperformance. And seven things came out from that, being, uh, being most highly correlated. Four relate to this notion of having finance efficiency, good, good strong, well-run internal finance organization. One is the corporate philosophy on information standards, the degree to which uh, process and policy and data standards are mandated and enforced across the enterprise. And then the actual adoption and implementation of that is measured by the degree to which there are common finance data definitions and data governance, a standard financial chart of accounts, and standard common finance processes in place. And, and the degree to which this has been deployed um, enterprise-wide. The second set of characteristics really relate to this, this notion of having better business insight or analytical capabilities. And, and, and three things came out from the the responses to our survey, uh, the analytical capabilities inherent in the enterprise today. And, and here we focused on a, a bare minimum ticket to entry, if you will. Uh, we call it operational planning and forecasting. Uh, the, 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 the participants had to have said that they have satisfactory analytical capabilities and have rationalized that, that um, operational planning and forecasting model uh, and, and, and have a consistent model for the enterprise. The second factor is people talent. The effectiveness of, of developing people and their capabilities today in place uh, to, to A, drive good, robust financial analysis, and B, to be able to do a good job partnering with the business and discussing the implications of the financial results and making more sound business decisions. Then the third factor was the degree of rationalization of the technology platform for planning or, or whatever other analytical capabilities we were looking at. But here it was the planning platform, a, a, a single instance integrated planning platform that drives a, a consolidated and standardized process around planning, forecasting uh, for the enterprise, uh, deployed to a large extent across the enterprise. You, you had to have met um, all four criteria for finance efficiency in order to be considered um, uh, financially efficient, and then all three criteria for business insight to have strong business insight. If you missed on any one of these, then, then you, didn't, you didn't pass muster, if you will. 
And the averages for these were essentially, um, uh, you know, at or around the, the median of, uh, you know, approximately 50%. Um, so so it, while it segmented the population on an average basis, um, at, at about the average or midpoint of the responses to the question, what we found was the population did not fall into quartiles. In fact, oops, let me try and get back here. Uh, in fact, what we found was the, the, the four profiles that emerged here uh, were roughly broken out with 23% with being what we would call leading or the value integrator, top right-hand corner of, of the quadrant. And this is a, a sort of the magic quadrant notion. Business insight, one dimension, finance efficiency, the other. And to be high on both uh, means you're a value integrator. Interestingly, only 12% of the participants were what we call constrained advisors. These are organizations who, who have not advanced, if you will, in terms of core finance efficiency. They aren't governed by a lot of process and data standards across the enterprise. Uh, the, the business units operate in a little bit more of a maverick fashion, but they've implemented some fairly sophisticated analytical capabilities, and, and they have at least um, you know, driven a common planning and forecasting solution for the enterprise. But only 12% of our population falls in that space. Disciplined operators, you know, th these are the ones who sort of built the house in the right order, if you will. They've poured the concrete foundation, which is, you know, good solid standards around process and data. Uh, they've, they've gotten to uh, a, a rational number of general ledger systems, most of them on a uh, single instance. And, and what they have to do next is really develop better analytical capabilities. But as far as finance, operational efficiency, they're doing really quite well. And then the scorekeeper, low on both dimensions, uh, you know, I like to say that, that uh, you know, for, for one of two reasons, uh, the, the scorekeeper, you know, m maybe is, is constrained to advance their capabilities. Either there's no mandate within the enterprise for finance to take on a leading role, uh, or, or there's some issue with um, the, the, the power base within the organization being unevenly distributed between corporate and the business units. We see frequently where, where business unit heads have uh, you know, more power, more authority to drive the, their businesses autonomously. Corporate CFOs tend to have a, a little bit less power to drive uh, enterprise-wide standards. Um, it, it, there's a challenge in driving from a change management perspective, you know, embracing some of those capabilities and, and, and deploying that um, across the business units because there's simply uh, n not a desire to do that on the part of, of the power base in the business units. Now, you know, aside from the, the, the corporate culture or philosophy around this, I, I, I say to, to um, my audience that, that, you know, ignore this issue at, at your own peril. In today's environment, the, the scorekeeper model for finance is, is I think, no longer adequate. It, it drives a competitive disadvantage. Um, you know, having an ability to drive performance of the enterprise in a, at an aggregated level is really, really important. And to do that uh, with nimbleness and accuracy and speed in today's environment is critical. And the scorekeepers are in a position where they're unable to do that. You know, adequate perhaps 10 or 15 years ago, where the role of finance was was clearly not as 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 broad and deep as it is today. Um, you know, that there are clearly disadvantages to having the scorekeeper model in place for for most organizations, particularly large globally integrated organizations. So one last point here on the CFO agenda before we dive into the themes. And that is, you know, with regard to that financial performance that we measured earlier, we compare the financial performance of the value integrator against all other enterprises. And the value integrator outperforms on every measure that our participants told us were important to them, uh, those being uh, some measure of EBITDA, revenue growth, return on invested capital, and, uh, um, you know, some measure of, of operating efficiency ratio or, or cost structure. So 20 times better compounded annual growth rate of EBITDA from the period 2004 to 2008. Similar metric, a five-year CAGR for revenue, and a five-year average return on invested capital. So 30% better return on invested capital and, and uh, almost 50% better uh, 
five-year compounded annual uh, growth rate of revenue. And value integrators have a 20% better operating efficiency ratio than the other companies examined. So there, there's clearly a reward here. Um, but, but what we don't say is that finance is the cause of this outperformance. We, we, we are simply saying here that there is strong statistical correlation between these characteristics and financial outperformance that you know, in all likelihood what's going on here is, is finance is operating in, in, within the value integrators, operating within an, an, an organization whose culture and philosophy embraces the characteristics that drive better efficiency and effectiveness, not just for finance, but for the rest of the enterprise, supply chain, other corporate functions, operations, etc. Thank you for listening. For more information on our nonprofit organization, visit APQC online at apqc.org.